Okay guys, just now in our lesson, okay, we always took the partial derivative of a certain function in terms of one variable. Okay, so we had partial f partial x holding y fixed and partial f partial y holding x fixed. We could only do that because our ideas and our understanding of differential calculus was limited to that. We have a certain function, we can only take the derivative of that function in terms of one variable. And you know, that's why we had the idea of the partial derivative. So now we're gonna build on that and let's see what we have if we vary both x and both y. We have something that is new to us called the total differential. Okay, so previously was let's hold y fix vary x, let's hold x fix vary y. But now the total differential is when we vary both x and y. And let's see what we can say to describe this process. Okay, something that like I said, all these new ideas when we go into advanced differential calculus. Okay, so previously, you know, when we're talking about the examples of partial derivatives, we always, you know, help one variable fix and vary the other variable. Previously, the partial derivatives delta, oh uh, sorry, partial z partial x or partial z partial y were formed by considering changes in x and y or delta x delta y separately, okay, separately, like I said again. Okay, so now, what we'll do is that let x, y be a fixed point in D, and now we have x plus delta x and y plus delta y be another point, a second point in the same domain of D, D is the x and y plane. So right now, something new, we got, we are changing both our variables, okay, x and y. Now, the function z, okay, changes by an amount, okay, delta z going from x to, going from the point x, y to x plus delta x, y plus delta y, let's go immediately to the diagram to see what I mean. So this is the x and y plane, or shall I say the domain D, okay, x, y plane, we have this point over here, x, y, corresponds to a value of um, z, okay, the value is that value over here. Now we want to somehow describe this new process where we vary both independent variables, so we're going to vary x by delta x and y by delta y to reach this point over here, and as always this point gives us a new z value over here. Okay, this corresponds to the surface over here, z is equal to the function applied to x and y. And let's see what we can describe, or what we can use to describe this new process. Okay, varying the two independent variables uh, together. Okay, so what we do is that, again, we just want to uh, apply the, the definitions, okay, to describe the change in z, okay, and that is, we now just, like I say over there, uh, apply the function to x plus delta x, y plus delta y, sorry, uh, yeah, this, sorry, this is y plus delta y, and I subtract by the function applied to x and y, our initial starting point, okay, with the property that delta z is equal to zero, when delta x is equal to zero and delta y is equal to zero. Now, no surprise about that, because as we reduce these both, uh, both of these changes, x and y, to zero, the point just goes over there like so. Okay? Now, um, I guess that maybe we go immediately to an example, okay, so we really know what I mean. So let's just say a function z is given by x squared plus xy plus xy squared, okay. What I'll do is that I'll just apply the function, okay, which is this function over here, first to x plus delta x and y plus delta y. Now, when I do that, I'm basically putting where all the x's are, x plus delta x, and when all the y are, y plus delta y, I get this one over here, okay, the first line, okay, the first line over here. But I need to subtract that, okay, by the function applied to x and y, subtract this by that over there. You know, I just do some rearranging, and this is what I ultimately get. Okay, now, strictly talking about advanced differential calculus, let's be precise in our conversation. Unbeknownst to us, I have described the function, okay, if you were to notice carefully, when x and y are fixed, okay, and this function, delta z, okay, is now actually in terms of delta x and delta y. Okay, now, that's why I want to say that we need to be very surprised, you see, we want to start to describe this process, but our main cause of describing this process is to really find a way to describe delta z. Delta z again. Delta z is really a function that, that changes, oh sorry, it's a variable that changes when we change delta x and delta y. So right now when I'm, you know, applying this definition, I'm already moving into describing delta z, okay, which is the change obviously in the, in the z value, in terms of delta x and delta y, fixing x and y, fixing x and y, okay. Why is it? Because like I said again, we started a point x and y over there. Uh, over here like so, okay, yeah, there, x and y be a point. That's why it's very different, you see? We need to be very clear on what we're looking at. We fix a point over here, let's focus on changing delta z and see, develop our ideas of advanced differential calculus. So this is what we have. Now, in general, 
the function z is equal to f in terms of x and y is said to have a total differential okay our new term total differential or to be differentiable okay this one you may be more familiar at the point x y if at this point okay delta z like what i was always stressing delta z is equals to a multiplied by delta x plus b multiplied by delta y plus epsilon 1 delta x plus epsilon 2 delta y. I tried to refrain from using epsilon, these epsilon terms, but as you can see, it's quite simple, okay? I, I no way to, you know, not use those terms, so I had to use those terms, okay? Where A and B are independent of x and y, and epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are functions of delta x and delta y. Sorry, A and B are independent of delta x and delta y. Okay, whoa, what does that mean? Okay, you see, Okay, I'll try my best, okay? You see, delta x, you want to look at delta, sorry, you want to look at delta z. Delta z, I know changes as I change delta x and delta y. Delta x and delta y now becomes the variables that I'm going to change. So, this a and b over here, obviously, will take certain values because I can, you know, just vary the our starting point x and y. And these values that it will take, it will be independent of x and y, or in other words, they will be dependent on, they'll be independent of delta x and delta y, but they will be dependent, okay, on x and y, okay? So if I were to just change a certain starting point, okay, this delta x would really give me uh, another function altogether, but it will somehow take this form if it will have the total differential, okay? And not only that, when I have this epsilon multiplied by delta x and epsilon 2 multiplied by delta y, it must uh, be applied, it must apply for this condition, okay? And that is the limit as delta x tends towards 0 and delta y tends to 0 of epsilon 1 is equal to 0, and when delta x tends towards 0 and delta y tends to 0 of epsilon 2, it must also equal to 0. Now this statement does make some sense because epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are actually functions in terms of delta x and delta y okay what i'm trying to say is this if i start out with a certain function okay and if i want to find the, the change in z okay i'll just you know use the definition over here i'll get this uh big expression over here but if this expression takes the form of this over here where remember i say again a and b are independent of delta x and delta y or in other words they're in terms of x and y the point that we started out with there I can say that this function has a total differential at the point x and y. Okay, obviously, obviously this applies also the limit as delta x tends to 0 and delta y tends to 0 of epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 is equal to 0. Okay, so that is what it means. This is our new definition. We have a function, use the definition um, of finding delta z. If it, if it adheres to this definition over here, that means there's a total differential. So, does this have actually any meaning? Well, yes it does. Okay, because... There's the total differential is actually the term used to describe something. It's used to describe the linear function a delta x plus b delta y, okay? And I use dz. This is actually called the total differential, okay? Now, as you can see, this total differential, this one corresponds to this over here, okay? Basically, our main focus or what we want to study. You see a minute why um, that is so. Okay, so this is the total differential um, dz. Now, the reason why I use dz is because I need to explain that geometrically, okay?